Good morning, faithful Labor Day weekend crowd. You deserve, I don't know what, extra helping of communion, whatever you want. It's good. So, no, good to have you here on this uh, beautiful Labor Day weekend. It is nice, and it's a great, really, time to actually truly celebrate what we have in with God. He, we are workers. Uh, the first thing he says in creation is be fruitful, multiply, right? Take care, have dominion, take care of the garden. Work is good and we should thank God for it that we even have it. Whatever your job is, could be a teacher, could be an accountant, it could be a pastor, it could be a son or a daughter, a husband, wife. These are all jobs, vocations that God gives us to bless others with. So this Labor Day weekend, I'm sure you've already done this, by the way, meditated on what it means to be a laborer, uh, but think about that. And then think about this in your position. Maybe you're working for someone. Think about that. Pray about that. Are you good at that? Are you a good employee? And also, if you're a boss, if you run some people, are you good at managing people and taking care of them? These, all these things a Christian are healthy things to think about, pray about, and ask the Lord to bless you uh, in your labor. So think about that this Labor Day. But today, we also get to have some rest, and that's okay as well. Let's uh, begin our, uh, let's have a little time of meditation. Let's pray and just be quiet for a little bit that the Lord blesses us through his beautiful rest-giving word.
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's Word, call upon Him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us confer, uh, first confess our unworthiness, confess our sins before God and one another, that we have sin in thought, word, and deed, that we can't free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as His people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in baptism you declared us to be your children. You gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins. Grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst. Enliven our faith today. Graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we praise and we thank you for your grace in Jesus Christ, your mercy, your forgiveness. Bless us with humble hearts. Make us unafraid to confess our sins, our mistakes, and failures. And point us to your Son, Jesus, who forgives and gives life to us. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the Word of God. Our first lesson is from Deuteronomy chapter 4. Now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and the just decrees that I am teaching you, and do them, that you may live and go in and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. You shall not add to the word that I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you. Keep them, do them. For that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon Him? What great nation is there that has statutes and just decrees so righteous as all this law that I set before you today? Only take care. Keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. This is the word of the Lord. Let's together uh, say the psalm. I'll read the first verse. We'll kind of go back in 
forth. How's that sound? Ready? Your testimonies are wonderful, therefore my soul keeps them. I open my mouth and pants because I long for your commandments. Keep steady my steps according to your promise and let no iniquity get dominion over me. Make your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. Our second lesson is from Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus, chapter 6. Finally, be strong in the Lord, in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. This is the word of the Lord. Let's rise for the words of the Word made flesh. to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Jesus called the people to him again and said to them, hear me, all of you, understand, there is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him, but the things that come out of a person are what defile him. And when he had entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about this parable, and he said to them, are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart but his stomach and is expelled? Thus he declared all foods clean. And then he said, what comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, comes evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let's continue with our next song. We will be doing children's messages, but I think we can skip that for today.
Ooh, that's me. Okay. Do, you guys, do I need to start again with the uh, sermon? Could you hear me? <laughs> I can't believe that. By the way, by the way, this is on this. Uh, we kind of messed around with the audio to make it better. I would like to know if you can hear it, the speaking audio especially. I'd love to have your feedback as we're trying to uh, make it better. Okay. Cleanliness is good, makes you feel good about life, uh, good for your brain, you'll live longer, clean is good, so civilization is a sign of whether things are clean and orderly and whatever. Caught up? Okay, now. <laughs> you can have a clean life, do everything right, be successful, clean room, and yet still things fall apart in your life. Doesn't really work, ultimately does it. No matter how hard you try, things get put out of place, your life gets messed up. Civilization! As we see it today, I mean, this is the pinnacle, I, we assume, <clears> 100 <throat> years from now, people are like, what the heck were they doing back then? But right now, we think we're, we've evolved in some way, in many different ways, technology and order and law, democracy, all these things, right? Clean, orderly society. And yet, weirdly, for the last, for a while now, we kind of feel like we're three steps away from absolute destruction, don't we? <laughs> No matter how clean and orderly we live and the technology we have, it just feels like just this could all just go away. We could go into the dark ages like that. Or something else wrong. You can work all you want, perfect your life all you want. It still falls apart. Clean, unclean, clean is good, unclean, bad. This is how God talks about sin in the old, well, I shouldn't even say that. He, let's say this. They, you, God uses that description throughout the Bible, clean and unclean. And so you can't eat this food, right? Pork is unclean, right? Wash your, the priests are supposed to wash before they do this or they're clean. If you touch this animal, you're unclean, you need to do this to become clean. It's a constant language throughout the Bible of being clean or unclean. In fact, you see a little bit when God says in the reading we read, Moses actually says that God is creating a society that people will look from afar and say it's orderly and clean, right? The rules make sense. People are treating each other fairly. It's a perfect place to be. So even as a society, clean and unclean. And in terms of sin, clean and unclean, clean and defiled. Following the Ten Commandments keeps you clean. Sinning defiles you and others. But even in terms of that, you can try to be the best person you can. You can, you can try to follow God's law and you still mess up. You can just pursue that righteousness. I mean, really, I challenge you. Let's try this. See, I'm secretly getting good people this, this week. I challenge you to follow the Ten Commandments, to be good, pursue righteousness like Aristotle even says, right? Habit makes the person do it. You'll fail. You can do everything right and you're still, there's something wrong in your life, health, relationship, it's broken. And so Jesus says something interesting today. There is nothing outside a person. Actually, he begins by saying this. Hear me, all of you, and understand. So he's not just rambling on. This is something he wants you to pay attention to. It is, is very fundamental truths he's about to say here. Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him, but the things that come out of a person are what defile him. What's he saying there? Let's go back to that clean, unclean trying to get your life all in order and perfect. Fixing everything so that you can feel good inside. It never really works, does it? Things still kind of fall apart. And the people of God thought that the law would fix them, right? If you do the law, you will be perfect inside and outside and everything's going to run smoothly. But it doesn't really work. And so what happened is, 
when, when you find yourself, it doesn't work, what you'll do, this is what you'll do when you're confronted with the law and realize you're actually just not righteous still. You, you can't do it. It's hard. What you'll do is this. Every religion does it. You'll go harder. So, so the uh, Jewish people created more laws, right, to protect the law so that they do them. So instead of don't take God's name in vain, well, how about this? You can never say God's name. They did that so you'll never screw up. But now you just made it even harder. That's one way. Sharia law. You'll see that in Islam, right? We're going to go hard and we're going to eradicate sin by going even harder and doubling down on the law. Does that work? No. Or you'll see, that, you'll see this in Jesus' day. He, he talked about this. You create loopholes. Okay, I'm not righteous. I'm trying to be clean. I keep on being unclean. How about this? If I, I, I sin, but what if I did this? That'll make up for that sin and now I'm good. Or how about rationalize? You know what? Maybe that's not a sin. Let me just create, you know, I, let me create a situation where I can do that wrong thing. I have reason to and then I'm sinless. Does that make sense? You, like a lawyer, we look at the law and manipulate it so we can feel good about ourselves because we keep on trying to do it, but we know we're not a good person. Or I'm going to pick and choose whatever I want from God's law. That's another way we sort of make ourselves clean falsely. I'm going to choose what I want to follow, and I'm going to invent reasons why I don't like that part of God's law to make myself feel good, right? Or screw the whole thing. <laughs> there is no God. I don't care what his law is. I'm going to make up my own laws. Whatever it is, every human being feels unclean even when they should feel clean. Dirty, a sinner. And we create all these different ways to fix that feeling. I really think this. I really, I'm throwing this out. I really believe this. Atheists, it doesn't matter. A certain sense of I'm guilty, there's something wrong or whatever. And, and people have to deal with it in some way, in some religious way. Why is it that we do our best and work our hardest and yet still everything falls apart? And Jesus nails it. It's not what's coming into you that defiles you. It is what's in here. Why is it that we've created, we've got all these opportunities to do great things as human beings and we keep on messing it up? We're one impulse away from a nuclear destruction. Think about that. How ironic that juxtaposition is between incredible success at the same time, absolute destruction. And Jesus says the problem isn't outside, it's you. It's here. User error. It's a tragedy that you can't escape. That's the problem. And that's the end of the lesson. What do we do with this? How do we get clean? How do we live with ourselves? Right after this lesson, Jesus leaves here, which is funny. It's kind of a mic drop. Like, think about this. This is the last thing you heard Jesus say. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. Boom. And you're like, ah, oh, shoot. You know what I mean? I can't solve my problem. <laughs> but thankfully, thankfully, Jesus goes to this town. I love this. It's, in tomorrow, it's next Sunday's reading, but it fits so perfectly here. Everything fits together in the Bible. There's a reason for everything when you read through it. It all perfectly matches. So he lays down this bomb, you're the problem, it's deep inside, and you can't fix it. And then he goes to this town, and a Phoenician, non-Jewish woman, she doesn't know anything about the Ten Commandments, she doesn't know the law, she doesn't know ceremonial hand-washing, Nothing. All she knows is that her daughter is dying and Jesus is in town. And so she goes to this home uninvited. Why? Because her daughter's dying and, and she, she can't, can't fix it. it. And, and Jesus, Jesus can. can. And she, they had this funny dialogue. It's an uncomfortable dialogue. Jesus makes you uncomfortable a lot. If you don't feel uncomfortable around Jesus... You're not listening. 
because he wants you to be uncomfortable. And he gets a little crass sometimes. She comes to him and asks the disciples, please tell Jesus to heal my daughter. And Jesus says this, I came for the children of Israel, not for the dogs. Yes, he said that. No, kids, you can't say that to people in your, in your life. But instead of being insulted because her self-esteem was insulted, she tells Jesus this, even the dogs get the crumbs from the children's table. You know how humiliating that is for her to say that? But she, like us, are in no position to be proud, whoever you are. She wants her daughter saved, and she knows she's absolutely helpless like you are and I am when it comes to righteousness, let alone the resurrection. And Jesus, she also knows, is a giver and loves sinners. And so she boldly asks again, why? Because she knows him. And indeed, he applauds this woman who knew nothing about the law or Moses or anything, who knows what kind of life she led. What does she know? She's got nothing. She is nobody. She is unclean. Whatever it is, I'm stuck in a situation I can do nothing about. I don't need help. I need a Savior. And there's Jesus saving when you hear Jesus tell you that all these evil things come from within, you don't say, okay, Jesus, help me to fix it. You say, got me. I'm weak, and I am wrong, and I really have no business standing before the throne of God. You can say it. You can admit it. You know how healthy it is? It's almost like cleaning the house. To be able to say, that's dirt, that's ugly, I really screwed this up. You know how it's almost enjoyable to not have to rationalize anymore or blame or put your sins somewhere else or make up more rules so you can feel for a little while clean. It's really restful to absolutely say, I stink before Jesus who died for you and forgives you, doesn't help you be better. He does, but that's not the core of the Christian life. But he forgives you and loves you and makes you clean, not by giving you more commandments, by washing you in his blood, which is what baptism is, and pronouncing you clean, forgiven, even a saint. May that truth empower you. May you leave here humbled, recognizing you're the problem. That's okay. Jesus is the answer. May you rest in his work alone. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us rise, confess the faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for one another, for the body of Christ of St. James and our mission, including uh, our overall project of growing uh, this community. Uh, and especially uh, our building, our current building project over there at the school. Keep that in your prayers. And for the world, let's pray. Almighty God, uh, by the power of your Holy Spirit, may we rest in the grace of Christ and find our righteousness in Jesus, our Savior in Jesus. May that comfort us 
Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, help us to admit when we're wrong. Help us to admit that we are the problem in a lot of situations we're in. Free us to confess our sins so that we can relax in your grace. And Lord, empower us to do better, be kinder, not because we have to, because we get to. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, we lift up to you the mission of St. James uh, as we uh, continue our ministry action plan of growth. We lift up to you our Uh, our various ministries that we plan on expanding, let alone serving the people now. Um, We pray for our uh, future associate pastor right now, Lord, that you will send us. Soon we lift up to you our building project at the uh, school right now. Praise the Lord and bless and watch over the workers. Uh, And Lord, we lift up to you our teachers and principal as they begin Uh, another school year this week, that it goes well, smoothly, uh, et cetera, Uh, and the new families that are coming here, that they find a home in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, we pray for our country. We pray for the election season. May we be good citizens and talk like people who have hope beyond who gets elected or how well America's doing. But we pray for a good president in this election. We pray for our current president, Joe, and Governor J.B., and Mayor Brandon. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, we lift up to you those who are sick and hurting, who are in the hospital right now, facing surgery, or looking for a cure. May you heal them, cure them. We have many people looking for a cure, going through treatment, Heal them, Heavenly Father. Give them peace. And Lord, may you surround them with our arms and our words. We pray for those who are living with chronic illness or chronic pain. Give us eyes to see them and care for them. We lift up to you our shut-ins and the elderly and the weak and the poor around us, Lord. They are human beings. We, you love them through us. May we treat them as such. And we pray for those that desperately need our prayers that are on our minds. We pause now. We lift up to you those who are, we are worried about. And Heavenly Father, we lift up to you those with mental anguish or mental illness and those in broken relationships. Grant us peace, Lord, in your mercy. All these things we pray, confident you hear and you answer us in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. be seated. Now we praise our God, worship Him, and we give our best regularly to support His mission and ministry. I hope you have seen that your giving time, talent, and treasure has produced something in the work that goes on around here, etc. So bless your giving and know that God uses it to serve others uh, with that.
Let's rise. Thank you, beautiful music. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. For you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank and praise you for this holy, life-giving meal. May we rejoice in the forgiveness we have, the resurrection that we have. May it fill our hearts with hope and peace, but also love, that we may love our neighbor as ourselves, that we may be lights in this city and in our neighborhood with our words and our deeds. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Uh, a couple of announcements. Next Sunday, block party. Kegs have been ordered. Food's ready. The fatted calf has... Well, we're not going to do that, but uh, anyhow. But uh, we got ponies, games... Uh, St. Jam's over here is going to be uh, playing right up front here. Invi invitation for all. Uh, it's free will donation. I mean, invite anybody. It's for the whole neighborhood. It's just a fun praise God moment. We'll also praise the Lord for where we are at with our building on Christ. Uh, all our different projects from here and, of course, to the school. You can see that. Uh, like I said, keep praising God for that and um, uh, keeping the workers in your prayers and schools. We start this week, Wednesday, keep teachers and, and uh, sharing your prayers a little crazy as usual, but what a fun time. Uh, so that's next Sunday. Mark that down. Our Read a Bible in a Year will begin the following week, but you'll be seeing a list of um, a reading guide, if you will, chapter by chapter, or each day. If you follow it, you'll be through the Bible in a year. Every Sunday, we'll kind of go over last week's reading. It's a lot of fun. Take a look at that. Uh, third, we, uh, as you notice, uh, if you've not been here for a while, our wonderful Pastor Keating has taken a call uh, in the larger church. He's over in Buffalo. Keep him in your prayers. We are actively looking for a new associate pastor. Very important just to do what we do uh, across the board, including school, let alone continue on our path of growth, church planning, campus ministry, uh, youth, etc. We've got lots to do. Keep that in your prayers, um, and if you know or met a pastor that's great, they will be awesome, uh, please let us know as we're looking for, it could be anybody, it might be from the seminary, it might be from somebody from the field, but we need someone good. So uh, let me know. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe that's a possibility. Um, so keep that in your prayers, that process. We thoughtfully do it, uh, but efficiently do it, and uh, also... I don't like to be up here by myself. These guys are awesome, of course. But if you're interested in reading Scripture, um, if this is your first time coming, we usually have a reader over here and some other things going on. Uh, but if you want to help out in the service, there's other parts of the service you could be a part of. Music or doing more reading, some of the prayers. I'd love to have people up here taking part in the liturgy so it's not just me uh, talking as we wait for our next pastor. So think about that. Pray about that. Love to have you. Maybe you're one of those people that could help out during the service. Okay. Huh. No takers? Yeah. Okay. No, there, there will be. Let's sing our last song. Oh, His love is 